for NASA consumer. A round of applause for them, please. Thank you so much, um, Kunal, Ruchi and uh, Varun. Very rare to get all three of you on stage, which is why we are calling this uh, Delhi Titans. There's another reason why we are using the word Titan, but we'll come to <laughs> that later. You know, the previous session, um, Rajan kind of made a very strong case on why India is going to make it when it comes to AI. This is not going to be an AI-focused session, but I just want to get your own opening thoughts um, you know, when you see so much being written and spoken about AI every day, what, what goes through your mind, Kunal, both as an entrepreneur and as an investor? You know, I'd love to start, but I think earlier before the session started, Ruchi insisted she wanted to begin. <laughs> I, I highly doubt it, because Ruchi told me she will block me on her phone if I direct AI questions to her. No, so uh, one thing you should know about this as a panel is he's always been the leader here. He's the actual, amongst the first investors in yeah. both of us. He leads the way so much that the phone I'm carrying right now has been suggested by him. I've never followed anybody's advice on which phone to take. But I must tell you, he convinced me on that. Uh, and uh, very nicely passed on the question uh, on AI as well. Uh, honestly, uh, I don't, I'm not an expert at it, so won't be able to say much, but the last session, I think the energy of Rajan can't be matched on what he feels about AI, and as he very rightly said, it's in our day-to-day -day life, it's on our phone, it's on all the apps that we use, it's making us efficient, but at the same time, um, efficiency comes with responsibility, how we use it in our day-to-day -day life, how do we merge it with how we are growing businesses, um, ethical usage, as well as uh, the right mix, uh, and I think it will force us to become more smarter because there will be so much data thrown at us from AI. How do we even process this better as humans? I think that will be the challenge for us. Varun, I'm going to ask you to take a stab at it before I come back to Kunal because I know you have a slightly different <laughs> view. <laughs> so I have a very radical view. Right? I genuinely think that as a country, uh, we need to calm down a little around this AI revolution. <laughs> Um, and uh, for us, actually, ML is more important. And, and by ML, I mean manual labor, and not machine <laughs> learning. And, uh, we are a country of 1.4 billion people, and uh, we should be worried. And, um, and we should be thinking of reskilling and thinking of future, and, where if AI does take over so many uh, disciplines and manual jobs, and how do we make sure our workforce is ready? And, uh, to support the emotional jobs that get created, because that's the only area, emotional and creative, in which AI will not be able to take a stab at, at least for the next 20 years, till quantum computing sort of comes in. And, um, and as a country with 1.4 billion people, and I think we need to think a lot more of how to deploy them, not just today, but from a future perspective as well. And then hence, I get worried when, you know, on these forums, uh, we keep getting asked, how are we using AI in our company? How are we using AI in our company? We're not using AI in our company. We use people. We want to create more jobs. We will create more jobs, and that will push the economy forward. I think that's what I'm more interested in. Wow. That's heartening to hear, Varun. We use people. We don't use AI. Maybe you can use people plus AI in some form, but Kunal, what's your view? So, um, look, I feel a lot of time people ask, um, what will change because of AI? I think that's the theme always these days in all the conferences. And the, the question I ask in return is like, what will not change? Like mm -hmm. everything will change. Um, but largely I think in the near term, we will likely see a lot of efficiency because of AI rather than, you know, very dramatic new inventions. Um, and I agree with what um, you know, Varun is saying that we as a country should be worried right now because of we need to employ hundreds of millions of people. Yeah. And you look at all the things that AI is saying that it will disrupt or do better or automate, it's, you know, voice agents. How many of these BPOs, like we employ, you know, I'm sure crores of people across BPOs yeah. in our country, suddenly that is at risk. We have KPOs where they're processing large reams of data uh, and information from global clients, suddenly that is getting automated. 
um, we are uh, and like legal functions right we are doing a lot of uh, legal process outsourcing out of india that is getting automated so i feel a lot of the ai plays around efficiency but i feel that that we should be worried that that may be negatively impacting india in the near term because it positive before it positively impacts us and hence we need to figure out that what will we do with all these people who are really skilled at the job that they do but then now you don't need five of them yeah. you need one of them plus the plus all these ai capabilities which at a meta level is essentially faster compute with better algorithms right like yeah. uh, you know what is ai a lot of people say it's not like someone invented ai like someone invented the penicillin vaccine like it's not like anybody invented ai ai is essentially when compute got faster and more horsepower and algorithms kept pace with it we have uh, better outcomes out of those algorithms right now that we've gotten all the ai out of the way let's come to the moot point building and scaling unicorns uh, in ncr um, you know give us a sense of where i mean the startup funding environment growth environment today um, because um, the gaga days of 2021 I, i i don't think that's going to come back i think this is the new normal that was perhaps an aberration um, do you see things you know becoming better because we are seeing deals happen but uh, the quality has gone up the bar for investment has gone up and we've also seen many startups turning profitable in the last year i mean ruchi you are always pat so pat positive no no adjustment whatsoever but <laughs> we've seen a wider trend of uh, uh, you know uh, profitable startups going up give us a sense of what we are seeing in the startup ecosystem today ruchi you can start okay, because start. kunal is not just an entrepreneur he's also an investor through titan capital investor in of business and mama earth and raise pay and ola and so many others yeah sure so at least you know at titan we have not really gotten negatively or positively impacted materially by these funding winters and funding summers and funding autumns because uh, fund are we in a funding spring now honestly i it doesn't matter to us doesn't like it's <laughs> not something that we are we are not predicting the funding season when we show up every day to work because we feel it doesn't matter given the nature of companies we tend to like to invest in we tend to invest in companies where we feel that you know these are lasting enduring businesses which are built with great amount of discipline focus on the customer the founders are incredible like you know uh, ruchi uh, uh, ruchi varun you know and ashish and gazal and others right like um so they are enduring businesses right they are never doing crazy stuff of suddenly growing for growth spurts because money is available or suddenly crashing costs because money is not available they have never done it right and at least at titan we don't like such businesses we we uh, or businesses that do that like we like businesses which are lasting enduring where the shape of the pnl is very clear there may be some risk in execution there may be some regulatory risk there may be competitive market pressures but there is no question about what business the company is in what gross margins the company operates in what unit economics the company has and how will it grow from here like what are the levers like there's no question about it which has not and these questions have nothing about nothing to do with the uh, funding winter funding funding summer and hence uh, we don't see a lot of companies in our portfolio that uh, either are major beneficiaries of a funding summer or um, you know see a lot of detriment happening to them during a funding winter we right. prefer it right ruchi um so i think uh, market is a great level of whether it's the private market or the public market and uh, there are different types of investors and kunal did share his thesis right so uh, every idea every business uh, will have its own suitors every thought process will have its own implementation approach right some will need a high investment up front to be able to realize the returns at at some point in time so i've always believed that there is nothing wrong in putting in capital for future returns uh and returns in different types of businesses come at different points and in different ways 
And uh, I think what's very important, uh, which Kunal also mentioned, was what, uh, what thought process goes behind building the business. If the building blocks are right, then whether it's immediate, near-term pad, it's long-term benefit or returns that come or ROSI that comes, it's uh, all an outcome of the right building blocks. And if the building blocks are right, then there are invest enough pools of capital, whether it's on the equity side or the debt side, which are available. There are companies leading the way on the public market as well. I, I think startups, more than the funding winter, has gone through, uh, you know, uh, the word has been used as a derogatory word at times. I mean, I, I, it's like startup hai, paisa banayenge ki nahi banayenge. It's very easy to sit on the sidelines and pass a judgment. And, uh, and I, I, I really liked what Varun's first reaction was. We are here to create jobs, right? All the companies which have been created in the last 10, 15 years, the amount of jobs it's created, it's taken India to a level wherein people look at Indian companies that it's not those just the top three, four names. Yeah. There are names people want to put money behind. And I think there's a lot of that, that, you know, that startup or entrepreneurship or new companies have brought for India. And in that light, I feel there will be pools of capital, whether it's for new age companies, whether it's for little grown companies, etc. But yes, there is sanity in terms of how much capital goes behind building something. So yes, sanity along with, I think it's going to be a very positive phase with a lot of companies doing very well uh, on the public markets and genuinely. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, it, it just gives so much positivity, right? So news can be very positive. So with that, I hand it over to you. Yep, Varun, in fact, you know, Mama uh, or Hunasa Consumer, rather, which is the listed entity, has the distinction of being the fastest unicorn to IPO um, in India. Uh, so who said exits are tough uh, in India? You have an entrepreneur who's demonstrated that. But Varun, you know, you've seen that transition, right, from a, a privately held firm to a publicly traded company where 1,000 people have 1,000 views on uh, what you should do, what you should not do. Is your stock price fair, unfair? How have you sort of grown into that? I think even privately, uh, we had the same view which we keep today. And that we would like to listen to everyone, and, but then have our own view on how to run the business sustainably in the long term, and, and not get swayed by what other people think we should be doing. And uh, uh, like I said, right, with, with all humility, love to listen. And, uh, and that's something which we've done privately as well. Right? And, um, I still remember me and Gunal in 2017 jamming when, where one of our products, Mosquito Repellents, was doing very well, right? And he was our core investor at that time. And he said, boss, you guys should become a Mosquito Repellent company, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I, like, but with all respect and humility, I said, no, we have a different vision, right? And at multiple um, times, right, even the private journey, right? Um, you need to know it's your neck on the line, right? And you're the one who's really building the business. And, um, and you're going to be accountable for whatever is the outcome. And, and hence, while you should seek the best advice, and you should listen to what everyone's saying. And, but the decision needs to be made um, based on what you really want to build, right? And I think that hasn't changed. And, um, the noise might have increased, and, but we continue to stick to what we were building and we're loving it. Right. Um, NCR also has a distinction of perhaps the, ma the highest number of new age companies that have IPO'd, right? Uh, there's Zomato, Delivery, PB Fintech, Mama Earth, Car Trade, which one? Nine there? out of ten public companies are, uh, public startups are from Delhi. One is Bombay, so just FYI. <laughs> Bangalore, sadly, nowhere in the picture, but what is it about the NCR region, Kunal, Ruchi and Varun, that it's turned out so many IPOs. I'd like to say that we are better and smarter, but <laughs> but uh, but I think that may be a controversial statement. Um, you know, I I honestly think it's happenstance. Uh, hmm. I don't think I don't think it is necessarily because of any structural reason as such. Um, I feel that if we ask this question two years later 
maybe the data will look very different. Because you have, I don't know, first cry and Swiggy. Yeah, you have a few so, in the pipeline yeah, yeah. who are coming up. I think it's just, it's purely happenstance. Um, I don't think it's worth reading more into it because all these ecosystems, Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, all these ecosystems are fantastic. They have fantastic founders, fantastic people who work at these companies, building fantastic businesses just because they, have, they are not yet ready or have chosen to not go public yet doesn't make those ecosystems any, any less great. Mm. Um, although, you know, obviously, uh, if we were not on camera, I would say Delhi is number one. <laughs> Varun? I genuinely agree with Kunal. It's just, you know, I don't think we can like say, oh, we have this quality because of which we are all sort of going public and it's not. I think um, NCR is a great talent uh, hub. Right? Uh, like, you know, Bombay, Bangalore, and now Hyderabad, etc., is also turning out to be a great talent hub. And every talent hub attracts uh, startups to come and build there because of availability of talent. Right? Um, like, I, I also think it's just happenstance that we just have had a lot more uh, number of startups uh, who might have started either a little earlier in the journey or felt ready to sort of go public and, um, that is there but probably over next five years and uh, it it can change and, um, but while it's uh, there we 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 are not shying away from bag bragging <laughs> <laughs> Ruchi? Uh, I didn't have the right AI tools to throw that inference at me to be able to respond. I, I really liked that data point. So that's all I'll say. So but I, I, genuinely, but you both are going to add to the tally, right? With offices, Oxizo, Unicommerce. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can. Maybe we can. But, you know, maybe we should also give other cities a bit of a chance. Maybe we can pull back our plans a little bit. <laughs> But, but look, I, I think it's over time, like Varun was saying also, like this will normalize. There's no question in my mind that this will normalize. Right. But Varun Ruchi, tell me something. You know, um, as entrepreneurs who've built, scaled, listed in NCR, um, how difficult or easy is it for you to attract tech talent, more importantly, retain tech talent? You know, one argument could be that other ecosystems are perhaps stronger when it comes to tech talent. But the contra-argument is perhaps the retention rate for you would be higher because, you know, people don't have so many options to switch or salaries are not, uh, uh, you know, off the charts. But if you can tell me how tough or easy was it for you to attract tech talent? So, uh, honestly, um, it's not just about the city, it's also about the leadership. I think... Uh, Bhuvan as a co-founder at, at uh, of business is a gem of a person. So I, I think half the reason why people come and stay is because of the leaders that they follow. And uh, thanks to Kunal and the ecosystem, I think, uh, uh, I, I, I think uh, that's what's important. I think, uh, as Varun said, all cities have a good set of talent. Right? It's just a misconception that Delhi being Delhi and, you know, Bangalore is the only place where you can have great tech talent but at the same time there are companies who do have their tech teams housed out of Bangalore because of the aura it carries. For us uh, I think like, uh, a combination of uh, the leadership, the combination of the fact that we, we are very clear as to what we want to build on the tech side uh, and obviously some of the elements in terms of how do we ensure that it's a homegrown talent in the sense people come and join us at various levels, stay with us and then grow as leaders on the tech side has worked well. Uh, apart from that, uh, when we were starting up, this question did come up, is Delhi the right place for tech talent? But I think it just holds you back. Uh, you should first go with the gut as to what is the right thing to do, uh, irrespective of the city that you want to be based out of. Well, uh, I think, you know, 21 being an aberration in funding was also an aberration in my view in the talent war that sort of happened, right? right. I think uh, a lot of companies raised more money than they needed and started working on Horizon 3 projects, right, which 
would probably not even see the light of the day for the next four to five years, right? And yeah, I think everyone wanted to be a full stack developer <laughs> <laughs> in 2021. Those were, those were time. I mean, I, I got my son sort of you know, into coding classes. I was like, boss, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if, this, if this is the way things are going, right, this will be far more valuable, so please learn, right? But I think um, otherwise, the first principles that Ruchi talked about, right, in terms of, um, you know, having, um, uh, having a challenging and rich sort of job profiles, right? and making sure that your leaders are, are you know, keeping uh, your people engaged and uh, making sure that you care about people and, and um, people appreciate that right? and, um, and respect. Right? I mean, those four are equally important, right? And uh, compensation over time, of course, you know, you have to be competitive, but you don't need to be crazy. Right? Um, if the other four are good, right? um, even at a 75, 88 percentile, you could actually uh, run. Right? And then, uh, like I said, 21, 22, some bit of an exception. Right? Um, but uh, otherwise, things are now far saner, and uh, I, I wouldn't say it's that bad now. Yeah, just one small thing. Business is a combination of tech, sales, operations, finance, everything. So whenever we think about a company, it has to be a combination of all types of talent. We cannot be over-indexed on one Correct. talent, and hence everybody should have a seat on the table. At least that's our view. So that's a great point. Uh, also, I feel that, um, you know, I feel the best founders are never, I mean, this is the last thing that they are limited by. In terms of, of talent. no, in terms of where to start, like if their business requires them to be in Bangalore, they will move to Bangalore and build a business there. If their business w can work just fine sitting in, you know, Banaras, they will mm. build it from Banaras, right? Like yeah. I don't think a founders think that, uh, you know, I need to be in Bangalore to build a successful company. They think what is the company I need to build and hence where should I go? It's not the other way around. If I'm building in Bangalore, I will be successful. I don't think it, wor it, it works exactly the opposite way. Right. One other trend that we are seeing this year is, you know, this trend of many of these YC-funded startups um, who chose to domicile overseas flipping back to India. Do you see that gaining ground? Is India now a very good market for tech companies to IPO? Because even a few years ago, people would say that, you know, if you're a SaaS firm, it's better that you IPO in US because there's a likelihood of investors there giving you a better price. Do you think that has also changed, Kuna? I actually, you know, I remember 10 years ago, we had a bunch of these big consulting firms come in and make proposals to us that we should uh, offshore our company because other players in the same space had, space had offshored themselves. And I was like, this is an intriguing idea, but let's learn more. So I called like, three more firms to say, can you independently hmm. give us proposals about offshoring our company uh, overseas? Interestingly, all three, four of them gave bespoke and completely different structures. Then I realized actually none of them know what to do. Uh, <laughs> all of them are pretty clueless. They just want to extract a bunch of money from us for the next one year to give us a lot of advice on how to offshore create more problems for us. I, I don't know what Ruchi is thinking because she used to work at McKinsey at one point. No, but <laughs> I'm not talking about McKinsey for sure. So, and, and they, and, and create more problems and then we have to hire them again to solve the problems. So he said, we are not doing this. Indian company, Indian customers, we will stay domiciled in India and one day we will list in India. And thanks to companies like uh, Mama Earth and soon I'm sure off business and Oxizo also, there are now enough examples that now obviously everyone's saying that India is a better market to list. Ruchi? So, uh, an Indian company solving Indian problems, having an Indian customer, and now the investors, very savvy enough, and in, in Indian investor is savvy enough to understand what the company is doing. So, I think a combination of maturity of the investing ecosystem in India. And the fact that it's a very India-specific problem that many of us solve, right? Ten years back, uh, you bet an investor, they would always ask, what's the U.S. comparable of something Correct. that you're building? But today, people understand that each geography, each country could have 
their own version of XYZ, right? A company it or an have entity, to be a mental cetera, model right? of the West. So, yeah. a, and people do understand. Just look at Zomato stock. People understand what the company does. We've seen how it's grown. People understand as an investor. And I think that that is fundamentally why a lot, peop lot of people are rethinking about it. So. Right. Varun, final words for you as an entrepreneur and as an angel investor, someone who's seen the whole idea to IPO cycle, uh, what would your you know, advice be for entrepreneurs in the NCR region, what should they look at, or entrepreneurs in general in an age when we are seeing a lot of disruption due to technology, what are the two or three things that, they, that, you know, that should not change when they are looking to start and scale a business? I think I would start by saying that uh, be open to changing everything. That's the first <laughs> advice that I would have, right? Because uh, uh, an entrepreneurial journey is about uh, being able to change your mind, change your thinking, change your decisions in line with what you are learning, right? rather than being very um, uh, stiffly attached to a certain idea which your consumers might not be resonating with. Right? Um, the other pieces, and, and I'm not much that we forget sometimes and, uh, is that finally all of us are building human to human businesses. Right? Yeah. We might be selling products or services to humans right? um, and uh, we, we get lost in machine, lost in technology right? but at the heart of it right? if you can't convince a customer across the table on why they should buy a service product over what they're buying today, right? there is a problem. Right? And that problem will not get solved by deploying a new technology. Right? That problem will get solved by building a better product and a solution. Right? So I think uh, that gets lost somewhere in the journey. Right? Um, and that has to be the core uh, of, of how you sort of, you know, do this. So I think those few. Thank you. I guess it also helps to have great co-founders, which all three of you of are. Of course, uh, of course. Amazing <laughs> to have great co-founders. <laughs> right. On that note, thank you all very much for talking to us. Thank you.